to the Tamil Heritage Trust monthly talk. Every month, for the sake of newcomers, we introduce Tamil Heritage Trust and its activities. And some of you may find it uh, repetitive and boring. But uh, we have been doing it. Imagine our plight for the past 10 years. Again and again. And uh, But the fact that we have done it 123 times in the last 10 years, to be precise. And the fact that we have been adding quite a few new activities is something that we are proud of and something to celebrate. Tamil Heritage Trust was started in the year 2009. The idea was seeded by uh, Professor Swaminathan here and a group of volunteers under his leadership started uh, the, the trust. And uh, we have been uh, doing quite a few activities. The major ones being, some of them are annual events and some are uh, monthly and once in a while events. The major one is the monthly talk that you have uh, come here now for. Uh, it started in uh, 2009 first. And uh, the usual monthly talk, we invite experts and uh, scholars in every field related to heritage, literature, and uh, culture of our country. Jay Mohan, Professor Swaminathan, Narsaya sir, who are come here now, and uh, quite a few, Dr. Nagaswamy, quite a few people have talked in THT monthly talks. And people who have talked here have become famous also, popular also. It is vice versa. And uh, these monthly talks are uh, happen every first Saturday of every month. In the same place, RK Center. You all can uh, uh, come every month. First Saturday is a monthly talk time. We have, uh, this year we have done so many monthly talks. You can see the PPD. Next is our uh, Pechu Kacheri, even though. Site seminar, okay. Site seminar is an uh, event that happens once in a year in the month of January. Uh, usually relay closely with the Republic Day. We all, uh, around uh, 30 to 40 of us, travel to every state in, uh, one of the states in uh, India, and uh, study about the temples, architecture, the literature of the uh, thing, iconography, and uh, other such, it will be a detailed uh, tour. The preparation starts very well in advance. Around uh, August, September, we start the preparation. Every Sunday, all of us meet. We prepare articles on uh, the various sites we will be visiting. And we'll be doing a presentation, which others will be attending. It will be uh, like a very complete study tour. We have, so far, we have 2010, the site seminar started. And you can see we have been to Mamalaburam, Ajanta and Elora, Pudukotai. Sri Rangam, Gujarat, Tirnalveli, Badami, Odisha, and Kanchipuram. And this year, we had been to Madhya Pradesh. Next year, we are planning to go to Tanjavur. Next is, another event is the photographs. You can see some of the lovely photographs, the site seminar trips. It's a very... Uh, Next is the annual, another annual event is Pechu Kacheri, what we call uh, usually in December season. Uh, it's a music season, and a lot of Kacheris happen around uh, uh, Chennai. Swami Nathan sir wanted uh, something to do with heritage during the time, and the uh, seed for Pechu Kacheri was uh, started. In 2011, the Annual it will be a two-day or three-day seminar with a uh, lot of scholars coming and giving talks on various topics related to that particular uh, uh, year's uh, topic chosen. 2011, we did uh, in Sangam days, 2012 on Indian paintings, 
2013 on Sri Rangam, 14 na, Dr. Nagaswamis, 2016, uh, 15 it didn't happen because of the floods, 16 in on Mamalapuram, 17 on Kanchi, Kanchipuram, 2018 on Chodanadu, 2019 will be on Pandya dynasty. Thing. Another educative tour, that is a short tour that we organize is the Mamalapuram study tour. It, this again is a detailed tour. The previous day, the participants will be given a presentation and the overall idea of what all we'll be covering in the next day trip. It, this is not a, just a guide tour. This will be in detail. We'll be uh, explaining about every panel, sculpture, the monolithic structures there, the different types of architecture you get to see in Mamalaburam. And uh, it will be a full day event till evening 6 o'clock. Whoever wants to participate in that, you can give your names. Another new activity this we recently started. This is some of the Mamalaburam photographs you can see. We have trained docents. These are all the first set of docents who got trained under Swaminathan sir for the uh, Mamalaburam study tours. And the next is recently we started a one-day program, how to see a temple, because, because we saw a lot of interest in people to know more about the temple and uh, architecture. So we started this one-day program. This will be again, morning will be morning session will be of three, four presentations on temple architecture, iconography, inscriptions, and uh, uh, topics related to what you are will be seeing in a temple. And the afternoon session will be taking you to the temple and showing you whatever you saw in the presentation uh, in a practical uh, walk. This, this is a one-day program. Again, whoever wants to enroll can get in touch with us. 9.30 to 5.30, it happens in full day with lunch and coffee. Another uh, program that we started very recently is the How Sam, what we call as How to See a Museum. Museum is uh, one of the things that we do not uh, pay that much attention to, but uh, Madras Museum is one of the lovely places where you get to see a lot of sculptures, bronzes, and uh, even uh, science-related stuff. It's a very good museum, started in way back in 1853, I think. It's a, so we conducted a program, but related to only heritage and uh, cultural side of the museum. We will be visiting the Amaravati Gallery, the Bronze Gallery, and that itself takes a full day for us. Whoever wants to enroll for the How, Am, How to See a Museum can again give your names. And we have <coughs> this some of the photographs of the recent How Am that happened. Next is we conduct a Pallava Grantham class conducted by our uh, Gopu here. It's a very short course of eight classes every Sunday morning. Whoever has got an in, I mean, interest to learn about inscriptions can enroll for this and learn about uh, Pallava Grandam. It is uh, quite easy. Whoever has got some background of Sanskrit and Tamil can easily pick up. If you know the Devanagari script, it's very easy for you to pick up the Pallava Grandam. Again, whoever wants to enroll can uh, contact the number and mail IDs are given. Anything like that? And uh, one more thing we just want to tell is uh, Swaminathan Sar's birthday is coming on September 8th. So we'll be celebrating it with uh, quite a few uh, talks about him and his work, whatever he has done uh, all through his life. Wonderful uh, works of collections, all everything. <laughs> we request all of you will be, you will be intimated through social media, emails, and uh, other communication thing, please attend the program and uh, over to sir, no. <laughs> to uh, today's talk is on the tale of two cities by Manohar Devadas. I request Narsaya sir to introduce Devadas. Thank you. You become another Good evening. It's my proud privilege to introduce Manohar Devadas. 
a good friend of mine for over a decade and a half. Actually, our contact started with uh, my writing on Madurai, because Madurai should always be referred to as my Madurai by Manohar Devadas. And in a way, it is also my Madurai, because though we are from Andhra, we've been living in Madurai for a long time. Manohar was kind enough to provide four draw sketches for me for my Alavai, which uh, adorn the inner pages of my Alavai book. The thing with Manohar Devadas is he is a sort of ideal. He can be uh, seen as somebody to follow, as a kind of a model, a role model for many. Many may not know the background, but so I will give you briefly his background. He was born in 1936, and even before he reached his 30th year, he was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa, that is, a kind of degenerative eye disease, which is hardly uh, to be, uh, which can be hardly cured, and it leads to blindness. Knowing that, he continued his work, and. Soon he had to wear very powerful glasses, as much as 27 power glasses. But still, his enthusiasm in seeing art and culture did not die down at all. Born and brought up in Madurai, he had his education earlier in Shetapati High School of Madras, followed with American College, where he studied chemistry and eventually held a good post in one of the private companies, where, as he himself said the other day, he was sent to Germany, and when he returned, his, he says, my value in the marriage market rose after I returned from Madurai, I mean, uh, Germany. He was married to Mahima, a wonderful lady, a kind of lady I, I've seen and spoken to her, so I know about her. <coughs> she was also a gold medalist in literature from Madras University and also a fine arts, good artist, good writer. So both of them found so uh, so meaningful life they were leading. But as Illa could have it, in 1972, three days after their ninth wedding anniversary, they were traveling in their car which Mahima was driving, a small car, herald car, herald car of those days, with uh, Mano on one side and behind him her mother and uh, Suja, the child. Actually, she should have come, but yesterday only she left his daughter, married to a diplomat. His son-in-law is, in, in, uh, incidentally, his son-in-law is the amb American ambassador to Madagascar now. And uh, they were traveling when a truck was following them and a lorry was following them. And at some place after leaving Koyamatu for some time, the truck, the lorry hit this car. And as the driver, Mahima was the driver, she was very badly injured. All of them were injured, but Mahima was totally injured and became absolutely senseless below neck and rendered a quadriplegic for the rest of her life tied to a wheelchair. That was the biggest tragedy. And his eye problem was getting worse day by day. But did they lose? No, they did not lose. In his book, Dreams, Seasons and Promises, he says, she had no control over many bodily functions. She would have to be loaded with drugs that would dull her sharp mind. She would have to live with the constant threat of infections, bed sores and spasms. She would be a dependent all her life, needing 24 attention. She was to be given, but she still gave she was giving throughout, both of them, and she also was a good, um, uh, good in sketching and painting. And they held an exhibition under those conditions. And you would be pleased to know, M.S. Subhrishmi came for the meeting and gave the bhajan song first to start with. In fact, TCS George book on M.S. Subhrishmi, it is Mano's picture that dons the cover. He drew Emma's sketch, and he calls her Emma's Amma. They were very close. And when such a thing happens, like he, with his retinitis pigmentosa taking worse turn, 
and she tied to a uh, wheelchair with her quadriplegic conditions they did they did not give up their life when dreams are destroyed it takes a rare kind of courage to pick up the pieces to push the past into oblivion and do not give space to pain or self pity they did not give they strode along together and they strode along together in a grand show and i am reminded of sarojin naidu who sang in her poem transcendence nay do not grieve though life be full of sadness dawn will not veil her splendor for your grief nor spring deny thy her appointed beauty to lotus blossom and ashoka leaf she sang but mano followed mano practiced it to tell you in the very beginning when he was in setupati high school he drew an engine most probably you will see it in this lecture today a steam engine a top shot of a sea engine steam engine and showed it in the class and his master in setupati high school he gave him a title he called him kirkupa am i right mano <laughs> so this was the thing acceptance is a special kind of grace it requires a lot of strength and mano has it and the picture of drawings of mano had dwelt upon the minutest detail you will be seeing now the symmetry of every brick and tile of the building ink the alluring quality of each picture become all the more incredible when you think of the physical condition that he was undergoing and he was using a lens of 27 power and i have seen him drawing with a transparent table powerful lights from the bottom and on the paper with this memory so sharp once he has seen he can never forget and i tell you such a beautiful sense of humor today as i said we are missing his daughter suja she was here till yesterday when she was being delivered in the hospital mano saw roy choudhury's beautiful statue triumph of labor in merina he came home and drew a beautiful ink sketch of that triumph of labor and covered it and went and gave it to her when the child was born triumph of labor can you beat it that is a kind of man this is a kind of humor he had in him and now he is going to talk about tale of two cities unfortunately i have to be leaving so i will not be there i take i see kiss pardon and your pardon as well but his title of the day thing is tale of two cities with i suppose due apologies to charles dickens this tale of two cities one is of course 2000 years old plus another is hardly 400 years old that is colonial madras i am not talking about the tondai mandalam per se and about madras rudyard kipling wrote a poem with a pessimistic note because madras was ruling but when suddenly calcutta became more famous everything went to calcutta including the governor general so madras was really backstage rudyard kipling said clive kiss me on the mouth and eyes and bro wonderful kisses so that i became crowned above the queens a withered beldame now brooding on ancient fame you will see all the ancient famous swellings and line sketches and look at madurai look at the optimistic um, uh, folklore of about in kattu kalanganum kal kadir ulakku nel kaanum arudal aruthu vara marunal payiragum arudalin kilaga aingul aingalathen koodu kattum maadu katti poradithal maalaadu sennal endru yaane katti poradikka maragana ten madurai so you are going to hear from me both about madras and madurai thank you very much gopu and company for giving me this chance thank you all
Can I start? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. yes okay. uh, um, I, I'm so happy that Tamil uh, Parambaria Arakatale, you know, who's, which is doing such wonderful job, uh, invited me to make this presentation. And uh, I, the way in which Ravi came and spent so many hours with me on this and the thoroughness with which he he did the work with me um, uh, was very impressive and I'm very proud of you all for doing all, all these things and may God continue to bless the wonderful work you do. With this, uh, let me talk. Some of the things already... Uh, Narasai at all, so that makes it easy for me to, to start. So, uh, I will start. Um, the title came because uh, when uh, Ravi spoke to me, he wanted to talk about uh, Madurai, uh, the heritage of Madurai, and laughingly he said, you know, you are talking in August when Madras is celebrating its 380th birthday. Then I said, I have a lot of uh, drawings of Madras. Actually, Sujata Shankar and I are going to come out with a book on Madras with my artwork and her writing. So, uh, why not I combine both? And we can call it, you know, a parody on uh, Charles Dickens' uh, A Tale of Two Cities. And we can call it. And the nice thing is, one city, Madurai, is 2000, more than 2,400 years old. And the other city, as we know it, the, 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 the modern Madras, is less than 400 years old. So, it's very a fantastic contrast between the two and it will be an interesting topic. I'm loosely chronological but not strictly chronological and I'll be moving from Madurai, Madras, Madurai, Madras, alternating be between them. And uh, we practiced and practiced and practiced. This is the largest number of pictures I'm going to show in this event. So I hope not to make mistakes, but if I make mistakes, Ravi is there to correct me. So I'll start with that. Uh, ever since I was, I could remember, I drew pictures. And uh, uh, the, the emphasis of the pictures changed with time. For instance, when I was in primary school, second class, third class and all that, I did mostly pictures of animals, you know, giraffes especially, elephants and particularly lions. I liked uh, to draw pictures of lions. Then when I went to middle school, like other school boys, my interest became more to road rollers and uh, engine, steam engine trains. You know, in those days in Madurai, uh, south of Madras, Madras had these electric commuter trains and there were no diesel engines in those days. That was only this beautiful steam engine trains. And, and as a middle school, school boys, totally fascinated by the by the steam engine trains and I drew pictures of them at various angles and that gave me a knowledge in perspective also. Once 
I stood in a, a train stood on a curved track and I stood in front in the rail track and saw the train. See, in those days there were not too many pictures and this was the only time I saw a train right at its face. It was a forbidding, at the same time fascinating sight. The carriages was, because on the curved track, I could see the carriages. I studied it carefully and came home and drew it. And this one drawing taught me so many lessons in perspective. Many years later, I wrote a book on my perspective, which Sujata Shankar was one of the chief guests of that, and in which I have written a lot about what all I learned from this particular drawing. Then I went to high school and I became a teenager and my topic of interest changed now. To Okay, I found, you know, sari clad women fascinating. And I thought that the sari is a very beautiful dress. I still do. And I had no sisters. And sari was a mystery. How is it worn? I learned if I have to do sari, draw sari properly, I should know how exactly a sari is worn. Somehow I figured out secretly looking at, uh, uh, you know, women when they were dressing and all that. And somehow I learned to learn the sari. So I did it because I understood how a sari is worn. I could draw it better. This was one of the lessons I learned. Whatever you do in life, if you have a deeper understanding, you will do better. So I, I, I did this. My father was a doctor. And he had a library in the house. And in those days, there were not too many Tamil books. And another English books, like he had a mini library. And there was a lot of books on art. And because I was artistic, uh, I used to, you know, go through those art books. And I liked many, many of the things. I made pencil sketches of it. One of the drawings was particularly attractive. This is about a, a, a famous British uh, artist called Sir Pointer of uh, 19th century. He did a painting of Venus all aglow. With, with, the, with the kind of a billowing cloth behind her all aglow. I did a pencil sketch of this uh, Venus. And uh, my father, who is a doctor, announced that I had got her anatomy right. He, he, he was, I, I was fortunate in, in growing up in a generous-minded uh, family, and I could, we could talk on any subject with my father, which was a great, which was a, which was a great help. Then, Though I was interested in, in art, I never thought of art as a profession. I wanted to become a scientist. So science was my interest and I joined American college and did chemistry. I majored in chemistry. And I was fascinated by chemistry. See, in those days, there were no good uh, textbooks in India. And the teacher gave notes, which you write, the, which you take the notes. And if you read the notes, and uh, you will get good marks. But I wanted to understand chemistry in a higher way. So I went to the library and started reading books, some of them written by, you know, Nobel laureates. And the higher, much higher level chemistry. And those books were so fascinating. And so much so, my classmates even started calling me jokingly absent-minded professor. So I, I, I was involved as much in chemistry and art also. Fortunately, American college has the most, uh, you know, among all college campuses in South India, American college has the most beautiful buildings. Uh, you know, Presidency College has a very beautiful building, but it is only a major one single building. But American College has many, many buildings. Each building is different from, from one another, yet there was a overall harmony. And the college chapel was very unusual and it was a great beauty. I sketched them in pencil and carefully noted them and then I had the, all the time and then I, in those days there was no uh, you know, engineering pens. You had to use this mapping nib, dip it into ink and draw. It's a very painstakingly slow process. I did a drawing of the American College Chapel which had an unusual shape. It had a dome. So this is the uh, 
the painting is there yeah okay uh, this was a watershed event in my life i realized that i had a natural flair for two things one for ink drawings i was good in ink drawings and two that uh, i understood perspective and i had a flair for doing architectural entities in noble architectural entities and so this was the starting point of my becoming an a, 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 a artist who did many heritage buildings so i i passed out of bsc and all i wanted to do was to do phd and become a college professor and do follow science there were many many reasons why i wanted to do all that but destiny had some other plan for me my father died suddenly of heart attack and so i had to become a breadwinner and i worked briefly in the madurai collectorate uh, then fortunately i got a job as a chemist in a factory in madras um uh, it's a newly opened british factory and they were making many battery related products but the main products they were making was minus electric safety cap lamp uh, you know which is using lead acid battery system the whole system and in those days mines used till 1950 they used only old davy safety lamp which was uh, uh, invented in 1820s they were using that which now these lamps are far far superior in in umpteen ways uh, uh, so the company was replacing those davy say safety lamp and i played a important a, a certain role in it and i was happy that i was serving the lot of the miners providing them better quality life and a safer lamp so i was happy about it not only that i did far beyond uh, the 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 Uh, the, the aspects of a chemist job i went to the library and referred to books and started a library and introduced new processes which they were doing in england not in india and my british bosses like me my artistic skills also came in very handy and uh, uh, the company sent me to england for 3 months intense training and in Eng- and in great style i was only a chemist i was a junior officer but uh, in very great style they sent me and i came and i, I also holidaying in holiday in paris and rome all at company's expense and uh, it was such a wonderful experience rich memories and and the whole range of experiences as knowledge i came back to bandras but the best was yet to come because in those days going abroad was such a rare thing sometimes it would be embarrassing a friend will introduce me as saying meet my friend mano foreign returned as if it's a qualification so uh, but the nice thing was my i was all ready to get married and my value in the matrimonial market went up very high because i was a foreign returned man so uh, uh, at that time through a common cousin i heard about a girl named mahima you know who was uh, who is a gold medalist in fine arts and was very highly qualified and and wrote poems and had a library of her own and uh, from 19 she was driving a car and uh, and uh, the, she had a keen sense of humor but above all she had a giving heart of gold and i've heard a lot about her and she had through the common cousin she too had heard a lot about me and for whatever reason she liked me also because she knew i was artistic and i was interested in heritage and she was interested in heritage also so we 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 met in a very unusual way and it, it was agreed by all concerned that we, we should get married and her mother immediately invited this was in 1963 my her mother invited me to visit her daughter at the, in their house which was very unusual in those days this was even before your we any age so i began visiting her and i wanted you know in life you have to have some plans and you have to try to execute it now my plan was i wanted my fiance to fall head over heels in love with me what do i do 
I was good in art and she was an artistic person. We were interested in heritage and we were interested in books. So I used to write, we used to meet two or three times and I, I used to write beautiful letters to her and uh, also draw beautiful drawings and with full of humor and all kinds of things. And she loved my letters. Sometimes I used to think she, she looked f f forward more eagerly to my letters than my visits. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, then for our, I just want to see only one example. For our engagement, I did a heritage drawing um, uh, of, you know, Michelangelo's famous uh, David statue just before attacking Goliath. Uh, this statue is 17 uh, foot uh, uh, tall statue. I did the handsome face of uh, David, you know, many days before our engagement and uh, did the drawing using this mapping pen in a slow way. and. Uh, and gifted it to her in my engagement letter to her. And happily for me, she liked the drawing more than the engagement ring I gave her. <laughs> so, and so we were very happy. After our engagement, her parents even allowed us to uh, I go out to you know uh, music uh, halls, lectures, uh, restaurants, church, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, movie houses. So th that was also very very unusual. Uh, we went to the you know the to kill a mockingbird came just two months before our wedding and we went to the movie. This is a Pulitzer Prize winning novel by Harper Lee who passed away recently. Um, anyway, uh, in this movie, a, a famous movie, in one scene, the child heroine goes to sleep in a very silent scene and I saw a teddy bear doll you know, by her side. You know, American children took a teddy bear doll with, with them. Uh, uh, so there's a whole history of behind that. But uh, so I asked, because she grew up in a you know, somewhat westernized uh, uh, environment. I asked her softly, Mahima, as a child, did you take a teddy bear with you when you went to sleep? Her smiling reply was, no, Mano. As a child, I did not take a teddy bear, but two months from now, I'll take a big teddy bear to bed with me. <laughs> so, I had to control my laughter because I did not want to, you know, uh, uh, anger the audience who sat close to us because it was a very silent scene. But this inspired me to do this salutation drawing in my next letter to her. Okay. Now you can see, you know, the 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 great anticipation in the eyes of the teddy bear and the and the happy, satisfied expression in the face. It's very difficult to do in a teddy bear, you know, with the with, 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 short, with the short lines. But all these, you know, I I realized as soon as I met Mahima, the, my quality of my English language improved, the, the quality of my artwork improved, and what more, we exchanged you know, books relating to heritage and art and history. And because she did the, you know, fine arts in Stella, in Stella Maris and the gold medalist, she knew a lot about our own Indian heritage and Indian art and, and all kinds of things. So we talked a great deal about this as well as about the European. So our, you know, we, it was not only fun, we also had very serious uh, topics uh, to talk and a lot about music also. But the only thing we did not talk about is chemistry, my favorite subject, because she's not, she was not a science person. Okay, now uh, uh, we were married. We, then in the marriage portrait, I saw that she had tilted her head towards me, so I assumed that she had indeed fallen in love with me. And the thing is, uh, another thing is, I felt, as many others did, that my bride was a beauty.
to other uh, besides her other qualities we had an extraordinarily uh, happy married life and even in our honeymoon there was a lot of heritage i'll give just one or two examples we went to uh, mahabalipuram and uh, we we walked on the beach and we saw you know the uh, the 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 shore temple at a distance with a with a grand uh, you know coastline so i made an on the spot sketch uh, standing and mahima watched it. this is the f- first drawing i did as a married man and this is the first drawing that mahima watched so this was a happy event then we went to many many places of of heritage related places as well and i'll just mention one among them that is we took a, a rickety old bus journey all the way to belur to to see the chennakesa what uh, temple of the hosalia di- dynasty and and mahima knew a lot about it because she had studied it and uh, so she, she was my wife was my tourist guide so we to we she made lot of explanation i made many on this part sketches of the, of the uh, that also so we had a very happy married life and then uh, we went we also went to madurai on a heritage trip and went to many other uh, north indian places just to mention to ajanta and ellara we visited together now in 1966 i went to uh, uh, pulikat lake and i saw a 120 feet long boat gliding smoothly along the canal with a huge big sail it was so impressive to me at artistic sensibilities it seemed like a very very wonderful uh, piece for uh, for artwork so um, uh, uh, i took mahima again uh, but we could not sketch it because the, uh, the as we, the bo- bo- boat approaches it changed its uh, shape very very swiftly so we could not we could not sketch it but i took uh, photographs then using the photograph i did a, uh, an oil painting the for the first time in my life because my mom had all the material and and verbally explained to me about oil painting i made an oil painting and uh, an art enthusiast picked it up so i became a, i did my first oil painting in my life after i was 30 and i became a, art became my second profession after i was 30 then i did a, a very big drawing ink drawing of uh, the same boat uh exactly to scale and uh, on a 28 by 20 inch art board and we went to the university library and mahima took copious notes about uh, the the interesting history of the canal buckingham canal and uh, then about uh, the the viability of the canal and about the hard life of the boatman and she wrote a crisp beautiful text about uh, the canal and we we a reproduction of my drawing in the front of the card and inside on the left my mas text and the, our christmas greeting we made our own christmas card and this christmas card created a mini sensation because we sent it very early and many many friends wanted to buy the cards then it occurred to us why don't we now why can't we make heritage cards year after year and people want to buy it we'll sell it to them and whatever money comes we can give it for charity so our heritage greeting card for charity project started like a very small you know sapling and which over the years grew into something very huge tree okay now this this card came beautifully then the following year we did uh, the uh, drawing i went in my motorbike and sat beyond uh, uh, katibara and did a, on this spot ink sketch by by the time rotary pens had come and using a rotary pen i made an on the spot sketch of the uh, uh, saint thomas mount saint thomas mount you know uh, has a long history because it is believed that uh, uh, thomas the apostle of jesus christ uh, uh, lived there at the, at the mount and uh, you know the irrepressible uh, italian traveler marco polo in the 13th century uh, wrote 
about uh, the belief that uh, Thomas the Apostle lived here. So, in Mahima could write a very interesting uh, history about the about the uh, St. Thomas Mount and this was the second uh, year we came out with this card. Uh, then, uh, we, we went to the United States and I did my master's in a prestigious college, Oberlin College, and I did my master's degree there in chemistry. It was very grueling and Mahima's job was to uh, director the organizing programs on a Asia, uh, culture, heritage and everything which suited uh, her temperament and we f successfully lived there and then came back to Madras in 1972, August. Even though we came only in August, we still uh, had, you know, quickly did a greeting card of now. This time in 72, we came out with a card of uh, uh, Kabali is for a temple and Mahima again wrote a beautiful text for it and we came out with this card and more cards were being sold. Then this is 72. Unfortunately as uh, Narasaya said uh, on three days after our ninth wedding anniversary on, on, on December 30th 1972 the road accident happened and Mahima became a quadriplegic paralyzed below her neck with no sensory perception below and she was hospitalized for 10 months in two hospitals and I, during that time I read a lot about uh, uh, the quadriplegia and I realized it was a horrible monster. It, you know, it, was, it has many many terrible aspects and the doctors were very kind and I learned a lot from the doctors also so I was better prepared to take care of her. She came back uh, from the hospital after 10 months in October 1973 and yet we had time to come out with a greeting card because she did not want to stop the greeting card project and we came out with a greeting card and uh, in this was uh, St. Thomas uh, English, St. Thomas Cathedral uh, as seen from St. Tom High Road. Uh, uh, I did the artwork and Mahima managed to do the, uh, you know, dictate the text from reading various books and all that and we came out with the card. So even after the accident, we did not stop the greeting card project. That was 73. Then the managing director of the company I worked for, this Waldham, it's called Waldham, by the time it has become indigenous, the British has left. He wanted to use the card uh, for the my my greeting card for the company, and I was delighted. So for seventy four, we came out with a card of uh, Mahabalipuram Mah Mahamalipuram Shore Temple, for which Mahima wrote the beautiful text. And s since then, you know, every year we 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 the, the company used my card for year after year. Then around this time, as uh, uh, I was doing a, a research paper uh, for my place of work, I closed my left eye and looked at the graph sheet and I saw that I could, there are patches in my retina uh, which has, uh, uh, you know, dead in the center. Uh, not fully but partially and the dead region was growing. So uh, I, I, as a... Uh, uh, Narasi, I said, I suffer from retinitis pigmentosa and soon I lost my vision in my uh, uh, right eye. By 1975, I could not see much in my right eye. And even in my left eye, I had a very narrow cone of vision. So what to do? I decided before I lose vision in my left eye, possibly, I should do as much artwork as possible and at the same time do work in my company. There are so many commitments, all that I have to do and then I will do more artwork. Then uh, how about reading books? Maima said she will rearrange her schedule and sit with me and read books to me, book after book after book. So I did a lot of artwork and uh, the part of this is Maima City. Yeah. So Mahima sat next to me and while I drew pictures, she read to me book after book, book after book. So I want, did not want her to stay in her was so, so I kept her very wheelchair very close to me and 76 we started and 79 I realized 
that the number of artwork i did during this 3 years was m- much more than ever before you know i lost my vision in one eye and a very limited vision in the other eye but yet the number of dra- pieces i did were more not only that the quality of the artwork i did was much better than before because technology helped and then the number of books my ma and i read were also much much more so i realized that the mahima suffers from quadriplegia and i uh, was a vision only limited vision only in one eye despite that we came out with the, you know fantastic uh, results so i told the two monsters quadriplegia and retinitis pigmentosa you put adversities in our way but it in a way helped us indirectly to do better but you know destiny wanted to uh, you know test me more i began developing a cataract in the right eye uh it's sorry the left eye through which i could see and the technical literature said after the cataract uh, surgery uh, the retina might have might re- degenerate considerably so there was a fear what to do so even while the cataract was developing i decided if i go blind i can write a book so i started decided on writing a book and started dictating a book the book is about uh, closely about my boyhood um, uh, the, the during the my middle school and high school years uh, the period 1947 to to 53 uh, with the uh, you know f- flashbacks and fast forwards a bit of them and it's about the school days uh, and seven of us were very close together and we did tamil as one rombo there is no english equivalent word so rombo kurumutana panno and the kurumutana galla vishayam nariya irundhu but vishame irukala and romba imaginative panno and the life was very interesting adu enna aacharyam na the there were the seven of us belong to different communities different castes and uh, di- different religions and even different languages but we were very close together we moved everywhere to, to everywhere together and we we had a wonderful time and, and madhuri while writing about our boyhood escapades i can also write about madhuri's hi- history its rich history about the temple and about the customs about chitrai festival and all kinds of the social ethos of that time and the social see because it was soon after independence there was a, you know enormous changes were taking place many to us the better some to us the worse all this i can include and some of the customs which are slowly dying all that i could record so i decided to you know uh, 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 write a book i began writing a book uh, it it was shaping up well then uh, badrinath did the cataract surgery in 1983 i after the retina fortunately had not degenerated to the extent i feared but uh, uh, i could not do on the spot sketches but i could still draw using more powerful glasses and various other innovative methods i could still draw so my ma started reading to me so i decided i will illustrate the book i am writing on about madurai then it was very nice because madurai is a city made for an ink artist so i did this pen and ink drawing the very first draw ink drawing i made after the uh, surgery was madurai spencer in venkatrama year building this is this is a very unusual building and uh, i narrated a very very amusing story for this i did it and mahima said mano this is not like a story illustration it's a piece of artwork i said this is how all the drawings are going to be in the book and every story will also have a you know a, 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 either a heritage or a historic or a sociological backdrop to it so i started working on it now i'll quickly go through just uh, examples i did this uh, drawing of the profile of the west gobram this is a beautiful west gobram profile a majestic gobram with a smaller gobram by the side and a, and a rain tree adding to the beauty but in, along with the gobram what i talked about is about jet cars see the inner city of madurai was so narrow the bus service could not be used and in those days if you don't walk the only mode of transport was jet cars these jet cars were a rickety vehicle with a mean jeep 
pony and a large spindly wheel. Uh, Madhuri was teeming with jet cars. In my book, I wrote a lot about it. And this illustrates the two aspects, one the glorious temple and the other the, the mode of transport, the jet cars. Then once the auto rickshaws came and cycle rickshaws came, jet cars simply disappeared from the scene. So I recorded what is there. Then the next, next is about the East Gopuram. Uh, the technique, the, the literature says, um, especially, you know, that uh, Deva Kunjari, who her PhD thesis uh, on Madurai, says that uh, this temple was built uh, by the Pandyas in 1000, around 1200. It's about 900 years old, a Gopuram, such a majestic Gopuram. And I have drawn seven of us with uh, one girl. The story is, this is Iyengar by Sadagopan, who is one of the gang members. His family, lower middle class, orthodox Brahmins, uh, following the old custom, they got the daughter married even while she was in school. Uh, but she persuaded them to allow her to write the SSLC exam. And she wrote the SSA exam, fortunately. When she was 18, her husband uh, died in a train accident. And, you know, in those days, uh, you know, widows were treated very cruelly in India. And especially Brahmin widows suffered a lot because they should cannot wear any undergarments. They have to wear only thing and a lot of other restrictions. But though he belonged to the old custom, old age, I think we were afraid he, the, the same fate may befall this girl, but the father did not ha have a mind to do that. He did a very intelligent thing. Because if he does not do it, his own relatives will be very critical uh, of him, leave alone the, her uh, in-laws family. So what he did was he got himself transferred to Karekudi, where there were no relatives or friends, and he put her quietly through college. And she did mathematics uh, B.Sc. And in mathematics B.Sc, she st in those days there was only Annamala University, a very small university, and the entire Tamil Nadu has only one university, Madras University. And she stood first in the entire Tamil, uh, the Tamil Nadu. And her articles came about her in papers, but they did not mention that she was a widow, fortunately. And so he got her transferred to Madurai because there was no MSc there, and transferred, got her to Madurai, and uh, he put her through MSc. And the, those uh, naysayers, the critic, critics, not the word, they are meaningless. They are not doing it. They are not criticizing it. Then yeah, our own friends, had an unwritten rule that we should not look at our friend's sisters with amorous eyes. This somehow the parents uh, realized. And so the parents used to send their daughters with us, which was very unusual in those days. And uh, this, uh, J her name is uh, Jayama. Jayama's father allowed uh, uh, her to go with us outside. So. Uh, as long as uh, her brother Sadagopan was also with us. This was in a little later when we were in, co when we were in college. And uh, so I, this picture symbolically represents two things. One, the majestic uh, Gobram uh, of, which of which Madurai can be very proud of. It's a macro thing. And then the down below, how a father broke the shackles of the evils of the widowhood and how he, he the a widow uh, could study and do things uh, in a way and how she was uh, free and and uh, could enjoy life so this was a in a micro level it was a good thing so symbolically there are two good things a quick uh, flash forward she did phd later and then married a gujarati bachelor who has a doctorate and moved to california and uh, retired as a professor of california university at davis <laughs> and I, she and i kept in touch throughout this uh, period and uh, any time she come to Madras, she used to always spend time in, with me also and I told her you know sometimes 
tragedies uh, bring good things also if your hu- first husband had not married, uh, died you would have been sitting and talking about the price of katrikai <laughs> now you are a professor <laughs> so anyway so th- th- this is her story i represented this uh, this drawing um, then i in those days they allowed people to go up the uh, temple uh, southern the, the south gobram alone so i went there and there it had nine tiers and from the sixth tier w- window i saw the magnificent view then i went again and took a sketch pad and sat there and did the sketch and uh, then i also you know um took a camera and took photograph at the two gobrams that you see one the near one is chitra gobram uh, which has only seven tiers and the name is very appropriate because uh, extremely beautiful gobram and it's in the nearer the inner praharam and uh, it leads directly to the amman sanadi and at the distance you see the west gobram which is taller but because this is nearer both of them seem to be of the same height and uh, that leads to the swami sanadi. nadi so i did this uh, drawing so i i kept adding more and more drawing to madri and as i was doing my eyesight was becoming worse and i also wanted to always include some heritage aspect now i wanted to include you know south avni mola street is special why because in that street is full of jewelry stores and the buildings there were different from any other building in madurai once suresh krishna uh, called uh, the building suresh krishna of, you know the sundaram fastness uh, called it quasi british quasi indian uh, architecture those buildings it's more western than uh, indian but it has a, it is very special very different all of them are jewelry stores so i wanted to narrate a, a story in which i wanted to include a drawing of this by the time my eyesight has become very bad so what i did was i did a pencil sketch on an a3 paper by the time you know this uh, photocopying machine xerox machines have become available and i did just half of the building because it's a symmetrical building half of the building and took enlargements in a3 transparencies two enlargements cut it slit in the middle and laterally inverted one and stuck it uh, together so it, the whole uh, building the complete building uh, came available and stuck a graph sheet at the bottom and the street activities i added to that and also whatever aspect the the, the humorous story i included in it and then i put this in my easel with a glass and illuminated it as narsaya explained from behind Uh, and stuck it on a scholar paper which has a which is somewhat translucent and uh, i could see very clearly what uh, what was behind and i did the drawing and i completed the drawing this is so as my eye sight went down i kept on ch- you know at changing my style and doing uh, all, 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 all kinds all kinds of things now uh, I have talked enough about Madre now I want to come to Madras um uh, Sharan Apparao had an art gallery and for the 350th uh, birthday of uh, Madras the new Madras uh, uh, as it is uh, she had an art exhibition and she titled it A ah, Madras and invited six artists to do artwork i did many of the buildings of Madras and i was so happy she asked me to do it because i so thoroughly enjoyed i did two uh, drawings of the senate house uh, which is you know chisom uh, did it and uh, in my book uh, sujata has written many things about uh, thing and this was uh, you know madras become the birthplace of uh, you know the indo saracenic art but indo saracenic is an inadequate name indo saracenic mean you know indian and uh, islamic art but it has moorish buddhist uh, and various uh, and european style uh, but the building is a beautiful piece of uh, architecture and uh, you, you know and also it represented the madras uh, university the, the, the among the first four uh, universities in the four major cities of uh, india so 
it has a historical relevance also and i and i did this day i have to say quickly another story uh, many years later uh, when the building was renovated with a lot of support from industrial houses and uh, it was done very sensitively and uh, uh, the the then president uh, uh, kalam uh, inaugurated it just before inauguration uh, some we we few of us were specially invited for him to meet in family and uh, so my because of my vision problem my daughter came with me as he talked with everybody i gifted him one of the drawings of the senate house original drawing he was very appreciative of it and then my daughter stood one step behind the, uh, the me and she asked why is this lady standing one step behind and my daughter said because i am an interloper <laughs> then she laughed and said how did they allow an interloper inside <laughs> then they had a very interesting uh, con- conversation so i have many happy memories i have another happy memory in that i received my degree uh, in 1957 from from the senate house so i have many happy memories of of this place then i have to go to very near the uh, senate house is the statue of uh, uh, the, the uh, you know triumph of labor now the triumph of labor is, is you know um, uh, Uh, is a is a is a wonderful statue by Rai Choudhury the probably the best uh, sculptor of Madras at that uh, yeah, of India at that time and uh, it's a beautiful piece and yet i would never have drawn it however much i appreciated but for a happy incident in the family as narese has already said it so my wife was expecting and so i wanted to have you know uh, art sensitivity and humor all in one so i wanted to do a drawing of the e- intricate ink drawing as usual i wanted to do it and went and sketched it and took some photographs of the of the of the statuary but what happened was the child decided to arrive two weeks earlier so i did not have time to do the in my usual intricate uh, ink drawing style so i had no time so i quickly pu- put a photograph at the back of the easel and put a paper on it and with a 4b pencil i did a sketch of it this is the only pencil sketch that i made uh, uh, at, at that time all the others were ink drawings and made a quick pencil sketch of a totally different style a very contrasty thing and uh, stuck it on a on a uh, inside a, 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 a card on the outside of the card there are only three words congrats on your and inside when you open it of course the 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 the, the, the triumph of labor will be there so that it is i'm telling my wife congrats on your triumph of labor okay so i went to the hospital in the evening by then the child had just arrived and because the child arrived a little early my daughter was put in an incubator and we wanted only a daughter and the first thing my mom said when they went there she was worn out and looked tired my mother was with her and she said mano it is sujata so i went and saw the baby in the incubator and gave a kiss to her and then gave this card to her and she she looked at it she opened it and she was intrigued for a for a flash for a for a second or two and then she realized the humor in it and she had a beatific smile that smile is in my engraved in my heart forever so this this are you know art made you know me very very happy too then not far from it is presidency college and presidency college is one of the earliest colleges in india and Presidency College is a great place where many great men uh, studied like uh, just to mention a name Sir C. V. Raman was a student there and many great people taught there like uh, Radha Krishnan. So it's a fantastic college and I did a drawing of it and uh, f- this is all this went for the greeting cards. Now I to because the, the ceiling is so high to s- indicate the scale I put a boy and a girl 
on the first floor to show the idea of a scale around that time i invited you know ram narayan the 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 cricketer of yesterday year and the and, and the professor in the in the you know school of journalism and uh, his wife uh, gauri you know uh, da- granddaughter of uh, kalki uh, for dinner along with uh, some other friends home and uh, uh, you know uh, while talking and uh, you know the uh, some singing and all that uh, uh, they said that uh, they mm, they were students in the presidency college and they fell in love there and they got married so i promptly named the boy and the girl as uh, ram narayanan and uh, gauri and so in the book that uh, sujatha and i are writing uh, about the presidency college i have mentioned this i have mentioned this also so uh, interesting thing like this happened then um, mahima said you know instead of uh, you know making cards casually let us uh, uh, approach companies and if companies buy you know use these cards then we can sell large number of cards then we will be able to give lot of cards earlier on we had an exhibition as uh, narasaya said and uh, you know through which we came to know ms rashmi and all that and we also came to know uh, uh, you know uh, subaya and uh, and sitama of uh, you know this uh, burgapa group and mahima phoned them we want to talk about something and they promptly invited us for breakfast mahima went and made this proposal that we want you to use the card and subaya immediately said why not we will use why one card we will use two cards and the, so the one card i chose to draw was from dare house that is the parian company from the the from the terrace i wanted to draw the domes of the high court building from dare house so i did this card and uh, included his name and he said because you are doing it for charity even though you do it for us you sell the cards for others also and he gave another order for another card also i did yet another drawing of a uh, short table in mamalapuram uh, these two cards were made and he ordered totally 10000 cards so the first time we crossed 10000 cards because we printed more than 10000 cards so we were happy. and since then we approached many companies and lot of companies ordered the cards and the number of cards we said kept on going up as my vision went down the the number of cards we sold uh, kept go, going higher and higher uh, now uh, uh, while there i also saw i had already come out with the card on the on the, the on the third lighthouse of madras it's an architectural marvel uh, which uh, sujatha has written about it all the details uh, so i did a, a drawing of the of the uh, all the lighthouse also this whole lighthouse has very special meaning for me because when i every time i came to madras during my teenage years i used to go up and go on a 180 round around and see all the beauty around and the trams going down like chocolate boxes and the buses called red lady moving there and the electric train and the sea and the buildings and the and the ocean of trees to the south and the majestic heads of this you know indo saracenic buildings rearing their heads above these trees and i have wonderful memories of all this so i did this drive then uh, i did also the uh, madras art gallery it was actually started as victoria technical institute in the beginning of the 20th century and later on it became the art gallery this was done by uh, you know henry erwin and it is it uh, you know lot of it's uh, uh, there's much more uh, mogal aspect to it than than others and yet it's one of the very very beautiful building my two favorite uh, buildings of madras is the senate house and the art gallery and i also like the uh, high court buildings okay now i i did this then when i was in school in my 8th standard the lessons were about the british raj and many things were written about them and in my lesson one lesson talking about uh, uh, the, you know this uh, uh, ripon 
uh, they said Ripon was a very compassionate uh, viceroy, and he was so good to the uh, people and so interest, genuinely interested in the downtrodden that the Tamil people called him Ripon Engel Appan. So this is what was written in my school textbook. So I said, oh, if the man is that famous, I must go and see the building. So my uncle took me there and saw the building, such a beautiful building. This was when I was in high school. And for me, that was yet another new new experience. Uh, I, we went inside and went up. And the f- first time in my life, I went on a lift. In those days, lifts were such rare commodities, and Ripon Building had a lift, and so that so I had that memory. And many years later, I did this drawing of uh, Ripon Building. I, all this went for the greeting card, and then I also did the, this uh, Victoria Hall, and Victoria Hall was renovated by Suresh uh, Krishna uh, the, uh, when 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 he was the. Uh, sheriff of Madras and there was a function and in which they had a, a special exhibition of uh, artwork of Victoria Hall and Saravanan of AVM liked my drawing and he gifted it uh, to Suresh Krishna at that event and so uh, you know Suresh Krishna and I you know we, we knew each other before and since then we became very close friends and he became my, my, my mentor then uh, <laughs> Next is the uh, uh, central station. Um, I have known professionally Anand, uh, who was the mechanical engineer in North uh, Eastern Railways, uh, in my related to my job. Uh, but now he became the uh, general manager number one of the Southern Railways, and he. Um, uh, uh, met me in a German unification party and requested me to come out with a greeting card of uh, two, at least two of uh, the railway related topics, one of Central Station Madras because they were celebrating the 150th year and this was also another u- unique in the, in the interest because this is the first time we were selling the cards to a government organization and a large one at that and we were worried about bureaucratic delays and all that and he said don't worry I'll make sure the check will come to your house and he kept his word the nice thing is he retired but he and his wife and my family became lifelong friends after that so uh, we we did this uh, 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 this was also a, a, a good thing then I want to go to St. George's Cathedral. This was well, the St. George's uh, Cathedral was, it was not a cathedral first, it was built in, in uh, 1810. Uh, it was built on a very similar style of a church in some guiles or some place in, in England. But if you remove the, the steeple, it could be easily mistaken for a Greek temple with the you know, Greek columns and uh, pediment and all that. And uh, this church um, ha- has uh, a special meaning for me because it is in this church that my daughter and son-in-law got married. My son-in-law is an American and the entire family, including his grandmother, flew into Madras and after the wedding end, the recessional, um, you know, the convention is you, the, the parents walk behind the bride and the groom. And because my mom was in a wheelchair, her father, uh, Michael's father uh, rolled the wheelchair and uh, his mother led me and his mother wore a sari for the first time uh, and she wore it so gracefully and uh, so it was a very 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 happy memory so this was a, a marriage of mortals now I want to go to Madre to talk about the marriage of uh, immortals uh, this is uh, I'm not saying celestial because the marriage is to have taken place in Madre this is Meenakshi Kalyana This drawing I loved because 
there are so many meenakshi kalyanam statues in in, in madurai and this is in pudumandapam high relief statue the fortunate thing is that the there's a, the the sky is open and so light falls on it and uh, uh, I, i sketched it and also my school drawing master had beautiful photographs of it using all those things i did this drawing it's one of my favorite drawings of 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 madurai and in my book multiple facets of my madurai this is the very first drawing i i i, I used so um, uh, this celestial uh, thing now uh, If people when they get married they go on a honeymoon and same in a similar way in thai uh, though the marriage take place in uh, in uh, may in thai the 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 amb sarkam ambulatory idols of meenakshi amman and uh, sundaresh are taken on a float uh, in uh, mariamman tapakulam and the, the uh, Le- the literature says mariamman tapakulam is the world's largest uh, uh, tapakulam uh, and certainly is the most beautiful because the bhaya mandapam in other temples uh, have you know some small mandapam here the bhaya mandapam is full of beautiful flowering trees and the and the mandapam itself is like a you know had a pallavan architecture the the isonia mandapam no there's no statues inside and uh, Uh, i so thoroughly enjoyed doing uh, this drawing and uh, this was uh, believed to have been built by uh, uh, the famous uh, uh, k- king uh, sorry thirumalai 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 naik did it and it is even said that there uh, there was a statue of uh, vinayaka in it and which was put in the meenakshi amman temple Anyway, it has a rich history also. Then, um, what is the next one? I forgot. Huh? Mahal pillars. Ah, okay, yeah, 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 okay. Now, uh, not far from this is uh, the Thirumalai Nayakar Mahal. and my uh, my my wife who has studied you know the architectures of uh, temples and buildings and all that uh, she and my daughter who is very interested in this and who has lived in 18 countries uh, uh, says that there is no building in the world like mahal thirumal nayak mahal it's very unusual and the pillars are very special and it has a very rich history of its own and now unfortunately for various reasons two thirds of the mahal has uh, vanished and only one third remains and the one third itself is so impressive and i did this uh, drawing of the of of, uh, of of mahal of the pillars and then i i want to go to goripalayam i was born in goripalayam in the west western end and had a beautiful uh, uh, rural view on the western side but on the eastern side there are narrow roads and a man a teenager who lived in the opposite house nawab jan it's a muslim locality and he took me to the mosque there and i was very impressed seeing the dome and uh, as a child which i did as a drawing and but i many many years later in 2003 i went again because i wanted to draw the 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 the, the mask there fortunately for me there was a scholar was there and he said it was originally a darga where a saint was buried and then he said two of the sultans who were killed uh, uh, you know uh, after the fall of the pandyan empire and before the ascendancy of the uh, you know uh, vijayanagar empire uh, the sultans ruled in madurai and the two sultans are buried and he showed their uh, where they are buried also but what he said was that the the big dome is a monolithic piece you know which was uh, i could not even believe it but later on in uh, you know in a, in a monograph i read it was a monolithic piece because our our sculptors sculptors were used to you know carving out uh, big stones and so and later on um, you know uh, uh, anwar 
uh, also uh, says that it is monolithic and it's also the very first and the largest uh, uh, dome that was built in in south india so it has many spe- special aspects and i felt sad here is a, you know it has a, even it has negative aspects are historically important that only two the, the sultans who ruled between the fall of the pandian empire and the ascendancy of the vijayanagar samrajya are buried there and it has a monolithic uh, um, uh, dome and it is the first uh, dome in south india but there's not that much recognition of it that is uh, one sad aspect of india but what i am very happy is that you know like you like uh, this uh, tamil heritage trust is uh, trying to change that kind of a situation and in- and increase the awareness of the people so i am very happy about it and then uh, i want to go to american college um, you know in those days clippers used to come from the united states from maine they will you know cut from the frozen lakes huge chunks of ice and bring them in clippers multi sailed boats coming very fast and you know what is now the you know the it is the even uh we uh, were yeah the vivehan and the house is uh, now in those days called the ice house and ice was brought there the interesting thing is in one of these clippers came uh, you know a very learned doctor washburn and his uh, devoted wife and they started a american college in madurai it at first at uh, at uh, pasumalai and it was moved to goripalayam which is where i i grew up so i was very familiar with the, with the american college so and i studied in american college and uh, so american college become a, a, a very a, a beautiful campus and i did the drawing of uh, the uh, the main hall uh, which is by uh, henry irving who did the art gallery and who did the mysore maharaja palace and such a beautiful building has such a you know pedestrian name called main hall they could have given a better name to it but uh, it is so so it is and i also in my drawing i included my two classmates uh, and one was supposed to be a college beauty bhavani and uh, her friend jamma i included in the drawing and the college used it extensively for making bronze uh, plaques and in letter heads and in invitations and all that and i am very happy that this is this happened then i as i told you earlier when my father passed away i worked in the madurai collectorate Uh, it was such a noble building i i had mixed feelings i was very happy that i was working in such a fantastically beautiful building but i was very unhappy uh, i was d7 a lower division clerk and whatever i did seemed totally inconsequential and i was only you know con- consuming uh, papers wastefully and those and the called the chani tal mag and the chani tal la da varu adu na pandra paper la enak vandu it seemed like worthless paper so the job was very boring but the place was fantastic so i used to jokingly say i feel like a donkey consuming useless wasteful papers so when i wrote uh, green well years my book i did this drawing this is the very last drawing and i included a drawing eating the wasteful papers that donkey is supposed to be me <laughs> so uh, life has been very interesting i so i came out with green values i started it in 82 and in 97 i came out with my this my debut book green well yes you that even here i use the north gobram and uh, and uh, elephant walking and all, all kinds of all those things so um, th- this book received a lot of uh, reviews and in general excellent to rave reviews more than the reviews i had 
లైఫ్ లాంగ్ ఫ్రెండ్షిప్స్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ ద బుక్ స్ట్రేంజ్లీ అరవింద్ ఏ హాస్పిటల్ ఐ కేమ్ టు నో మీ నాట్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ మై విషన్ ప్రాబ్లమ్ బట్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ బుక్ సంబడి ఫ్రమ్ అరవింద్ చిత్ర రో రోట్ అప్రిషియేటివ్ లెటర్ అబౌట్ మై బుక్ సిన్స్ దెన్ ద ఎంటైర్ ఫ్యామిలీ బికేమ్ మై ఫ్రెండ్స్ అండ్ దే కంటిన్యూ టు రిమైన్ మై ఫ్రెండ్స్ టిల్ నౌ అండ్ శ్యామలా నారాయణ అండ్ ఏ స్కాలర్ అండ్ యు నో సో మెనీ అదర్స్ సో మెనీ ఆఫ్ దమ్ బికేమ్ మై లైఫ్ లాంగ్ డియర్ ఫ్రెండ్స్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ బుక్ then um uh, i i'll go back to madras again in 2006 the uh, british deputy high commissioner's wife lynn corner wanted to draw their their house cottingly cottingly according to mutea is the only building which is owned by the british government in india and this is where the deputy high commissioner's residence is a sprawling big bungalow in a large uh, property full of trees and by then my vision has gone very bad and i was very reluctant to do it but she was very persuasive and uh, so uh, i could see slightly better in the morning my ma said okay let us try and suja's classmate john became very close to me and uh, mahima and she was very supportive and she took us early in the morning uh, to coating lee and mahima chose the place from which i could draw and i could see a very very small circle very i had a very narrow co- cone of vision i could still see some and i saw some and john he explained to me i i walked with you know my hand you know gliding along the thing and even folded a paper and all kinds of things i did and we visited two times and then i understood it partly through the explanations given by mahima and john and partly through the paper uh, thing i folded and partly through what little i saw before my memory lapse i wanted to draw and i made a, a pencil sketch using my knowledge in perspective and what i felt and what i saw before i before the memory lapse and when mahima sat up in the bed after her lying down in the bed when she sighed she said oh mano how did you do uh, 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 coating me uh, without even a photograph without even a sketch so uh, she recognized it it is uh, coatingly and then john had taken a lot of photographs in a digital camera and i asked her to send light pa- prints on paper and somebody inked it for me and using my knowledge in uh, uh, perspective i i did the final drawing using that and uh, uh, lin is a very aggressive woman she told mahima you must thank me because uh, for your husband doing this wonderful work because i bullied him into doing it and her husband said mano i am so glad that i i thought she i am the only one she bullies so she bullies you also <laughs> so that was fun anyway uh, then uh, now i am going back to mother elia no no strictly Huh? Ah, yeah, 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 the most important thing. So, uh, you know, uh, I liked, uh, you know, there's a tree very near where you are, where, 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 uh, you know, this, uh, you know, RK uh, Convention Center is with the, with the twisted branches. And uh, I liked the tree so much, I did the drawing of it. And uh, so this is, uh, 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 which is, uh, 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 Sujata found out his uh, copper pot tree and uh, so I'm glad that uh, this, tree, this tree was done and uh, I did it because of the tree and this is also has a place in the book and uh, then uh, I have to go to uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, Arkat uh, uh, this, uh, the Chepak Palace 
it's the drawing i have made is not really of the palace uh, after the palace was built shishom did the, this outer uh, thing a few years later and the unusual thing is he used stones uh, of uh, different you know two different shades and she he alternated them horizontally and it is it is a very very beautiful piece of work so i did this drawing mainly for we did six greeting cards that year this was one of them and we received a call and the person wanted to buy a large number of these cards and said i will send a secretary and collect the cards we casually asked him we had both the phones both my man died and we casually asked him may know who who is talking he said i am the nawab of our card <laughs> then we had a very lively conversation with him and he promptly invited us for tea and uh, you know one of my mom's friends uh, zubi uh, took us to his house and uh, his wife a fragile beauty served a fantastic tea for us and since then you know he has uh, remained our, our, our friends and hopefully he is writing you know a forward for the book that sujata and they are coming out sujata when or is sujata it is sujata shankar not my daughter sujata okay so uh, we are coming out the book uh, and the other interesting thing is uh, this asan memorial school uh, invited me two times the second time they invited me for the madras celebration it so happened that the uh, enna rani par kumar rani kumar rani kumar rani meena mutteya and the nawab Uh, so we happened to sit in the principal office and i said it is very unusual for a, a, a situation like this where a commoner sits uh, with the with the you know nawab on one side and rani on the other <laughs> not only that i said even more special the nawab is a muslim and i am a christian and the rani is a hindu and this shows the 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 quality of you know uh, broad mindedness and you know the generosity and uh, you know uh, social acceptance of different religions by madras and and the nawab in his speech even mentioned this so i have many you see every time you do a drawing some wonderful thing like this happens now uh, i have to go to tirnir malai ran padu okay tirnir malai is very special a, a, a canadian friend who who who, who loves uh, temples uh, tem- temple architecture who lived in madurai uh, who's our good friend who came to spend some time with us and he said from the plain as it landed from the south he saw a, a, a tank and a beautiful temple uh, atop a hill then i knew it is tirunel malai but i never been there so that very afternoon uh, he and his wife uh, and my daughter uh, at that time were in primary school and i we visited the place and it was such a beautiful place it did not look like madras at all one would uh, think that that is somewhere near tirunel valley or kanyakumari you know that kind of a rural ambience it had and the temple itself was very beautiful and uh, i wanted to do a drawing of it but it took many many years why because ms subrakshmi and uh, sadashiva mama got married in this church and so dr badrinath you know ms subrakshmi was a great patron of uh, badrinath dr badrinath wanted me to come out with a card on on tirunir malai so we did a card on this tirunir malai in which mahima wrote about uh, you know the sadashiva mama and uh, yama sama getting married there uh, and uh, so we gifted them 20 of these cards so then to our utter surprise sadashiva mama uh, and yama sama wrote in one of these cards a very nice words and sent a, a card back to us so it is one of our very valuable possessions அந்த படம் வந்துருச்சு இல்லை 
okay so he wrote such a such a nice thing and badri was so happy with the card so after a few years he wanted the cards again but unfortunately this time the mahima's text is exactly the same but she had to add the two words uh, late in front of uh, sada shivam and late in front of ms because between the two cars they had both passed away time had marched on and uh, then now i go back to madurai uh, i took mahima to the nataka sala in 2002 earlier on she had seen the mahal but inside we did not go and we she saw it and said mano it's so beautiful you must try it for the book you know i was coming out with the next book my multiple facets of my mother and i said you know the light level is not high and my eyesight is very very bad and how you know i am intimidated then she said mano please try and fail when you try you will learn something about it so it won't be a waste of time try then chitra said i uh, okay i will help you and chitra helped me a lot in uh, doing this and uh, you know i studied it and the photographs were taken of various aspects and all that and using my knowledge because the close shot you know the the vanishing point was uh, that some of the lines were very steep so, so when i used the, my knowledge of uh, of uh, perspective i realized uh, some some of the pillars did not follow the rule of perspective i wondered why then i realized because the roof had a curvature the the curved roof because of its weight were pushing the pillars away and the pillars were moving outwards and if it had been left the thing would have collapsed but uh, the the collector of madurai then blackburn in the mid 19th century invited the famous chisom to uh, come and help arrest the uh, fall so he put you know up uh, you know horizontal stair wires so that they won't move further but they have already moved to some extent so that's why they did not follow the follow the rule but i followed the rule when i did my drawing i i i did the uh, the pillars at the right place following the rule and they, of course i left out the the stay horizontal stay wire that chisom put on top for them not to move further uh, so that i wanted to show it as it was so this was one of the drawings i did when my eyesight was pretty bad but because of all the help i received even the julian i was talked about he helped me and uh, so this was the drawing and I, and i was very happy then my daughter edited the book and she is looked at it and uh, she said now where is pudumandapu i said no i didn't draw pudumandapu she said appa pudumandapu is such a special place without pudumandapu uh, the book will not be complete please 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 do pudumandapu so then again my friends helped arvind chitra helped and uh, there was a man called mike myers he helped julian helped my artistic friend i don't know some of you may know jairaj you know who became a very famous uh, magazine illustrator he was one of the characters in my first book green valley yes anyway and so he also helped and i went and uh, with my hands felt the statues and uh, even the tailor sitting there and doing the uh, i felt the machines and all that and uh, finally i did this drawing this was the, for the first print of the book which was released in 2007 this was the very last drawing i did and i smiled and told my monster uh, retinitis pigmentosa one day you will uh, steal my eyesight but you have not succeeded yet so th- so this was the last time of for the first edition of the book and uh, in 2000 unfortunately mahima around this time you know her 
uh, you know, stamina began to wane. Though, you know, she lived for 35 years. Quadriplegics in India do not live for more than 4 or 5 years. She, many say it's some sort of a record. And she led an active life, you know. Uh, she went everywhere. Uh, we, we, were, we were seen everywhere. Anyway, so uh, her memory started uh, going bad. She used to read to me and my heart will ache when she reads a book she will be reading, you know, uh, the same line six times and would not know. So th that's kind of a stage she was getting into. But then I said, we won't come out with the greeting card. She said, no, Mano, this time we will come out with the card. For next year, we'll let it be the last time. So despite that, despite all the, you know, that in, in uh, because we do these cards well before the, the music season, and the season, so it doesn't, uh, you know, suffer as much. So in in October we did this cast, but we wrote to all the magazines and all the people that this is the last time you are going to come out with the greeting card. From now on they won't, because my eyesight was also going bad. On account of that or for whatever reason, um, uh, the the cards sold. We sitting at home. She managed to sell with my support more than 33,000 cards, all from the house. And the, the, so I used to tell her, I worked for 16 years, 17 years, and uh, get the royalty, the royalty. And in one year, you make more money than that. So, but anyway, everything went for uh, uh, for uh, for some cars. For example, my first book, the entire royalty I gave to my school. My second and third book I gave to my college. And this, uh, my mother I gave to Aravinda Hospital. So it, it went for uh, help. So anyway, she, 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 she did it. And she signed the checks for uh, all the institutions we supported uh, in February. It was the end of February. And in March, in her sleep, she passed away peacefully in 2008. So immediately I started two endowments, one in Aravinda Hospital and one in, uh, I, my speech is going to come to an end now soon, uh, one in Aravinda Hospital, one in Sankara Netral, in her name. Earlier on we were giving money to them through the cards, but now I started the endowments. And many, without asking, uh, sent the money. I sold the property uh, and, uh, to raise the funds and then I also wanted to enhance the Carpora by doing an art exhibition. By then my vision had gone very bad and I decided to do watercolors. Uh, by then my color perception has become very poor. I could not distinguish between olive green and gray, between, you know, various, you know, magenta, red, maroon, uh, pink, all this I cannot distinguish. But yet I chose watercolor because of technology. You know, Stedler came out with, uh, you know, umpteen watercolor pencils and the watercolor pens and my daughter gave me a, a, a box of 32 watercolor pencils with various shades in gray alone there are five shades of gray that kind of a thing using those and using put and you know rubber band and all that I identified the thing and the helpers will also say what color it is and I created my own style of watercolor I cannot do the conventional style uh, my own style and I did large format watercolors and I, I did 33 watercolors uh, uh, that, but I have missed something in And either put it in a... Okay, I'll go back to that. Huh? Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I came out with this uh, multiple facets of my mother book. Uh, uh, I'll show you then uh, quicker. Uh, can we go back to that? Okay, see this, uh, uh, I, 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 I told you I did these two drawings. Uh, the one drawing, we'll leave it. Okay, a anyway, I explained how I did a very complicated drawing, which, uh, you know, which will take a lot of time, I will not talk about it. Uh, so I did this uh, uh, 33 watercolors, and some of which was of Madurai, and some, and some of Bedras. I will to give just two examples. Uh, one is uh, of uh, the, this, this Madhuri Alagar temple. Uh, 
which is 13 kilometers north of Madurai. It's a beautiful temple Gopuram with the backdrop of the verdant hill and uh, monkeys walking around and there was an elephant uh, which was there. And uh, I have special memory of this because when I came back from there in the evening, I saw the Western Ghats at the sunset and that was the last time I saw Western Ghats. Then after that my vision had gone bad, I could not see. So I have many, many memories of that. So this uh, Alagat temple, I did the watercolor. And for Madras, I just want to show one representative sample, the high court uh, domes, the beautiful high court domes. In I did it in color. Then the, the next thing I want to show is, you remember that I said, I, during the courtship, I sent a letter with the with the teddy bear representing me and the doll representing my ma. The doll is no more. But Mahima's memories remain with me. And like the Greeks, I represented her, uh, uh, her as a beautiful butterfly. And so, in, and there was a, this butterfly has a special connection with Mahima, which is too long to explain. But yeah, a butterfly with a specific wing pattern, I did. And instead of the uh, doll, I made the butterfly sit at the arm of the teddy bear that represent beautiful spirit of Mahima. And this was bought by a uh, art enthusiast and the man, the check went to directly to Arvind, uh, to Sankara Netralia. So I thought 54 years ago when Mahima made that witty statement, she I, Thankful that I asked her a mundane question. She made a witty statement on account of which many good things happened. And then I did this wa this watercolor, simple watercolor, which was appreciated and which was bought and which money went to help some visually challenged poor children. So life has been good. Now I end my talk by the amount of time and trouble that uh, Ravi took was absolutely amazing and uh, and I end my talk saying this uh, you know I I lost my wife I lost my eyesight and I'm 83 and I am living alone yet I'm an extraordinarily happy person why because of all the love and support I receive and I continue to be, despite all this, I still continue to be creative. And I shall, I want to tell you, I shall be cherishing the memory of this evening of my presentation to you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a glorious evening, a glorious life. This is a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's and I think the Tamil Heritage Trust it will cherish this evening more than any other evening. Thank you very much.
இன்ஃபேக்ட் அவர் வந்து எனக்கு தேங்க் பண்ணார் இன்ஃபேக்ட் நான் வந்து அவருக்கு தேங்க் பண்ணணும் முதல்ல வந்து இவர் பேச சொல்லும்போது சொன்னார் இன்ஃபேக்ட் எனக்கு ஜென்ரலாக ஒரு லேடி வந்து ஹெல்ப் பண்ணுவாங்க அவங்க வந்து இப்போ வெளியூருக்கு போயிருக்காங்க எனக்கு ஏதாவது ஹெல்ப் வேணும் அப்படின்னு நான் வந்து ஐ வாலண்டியர் டு ஹெல்ப் ஹிம் அவர் வீட்டுக்கு வந்து அஞ்சு தடவை போனேன் நான் அதில் வந்து தி அமௌண்ட் ஆஃப் இன்ஃபேக்ட் ஆர்டிஸ்டிக் சென்சிபிலிட்டி இன்ஃபேக்ட் தட் ஐ டிஸ்கவர்ட் இன் மீ வாஸ் எக்ஸ்ட்ரீம்லி இன்ஃபேக்ட் கிரேட் இன்ஃபேக்ட் பட் ஐ நெவர் யூனோ இட் இட் வாஸ் ஜஸ்ட் டு ஹெல்ப் ஹிம் பட் தென் ஐ இன்ஃபேக்ட் ஐ ஹெல்ப் மை செல்ஃப் இன்ஃபேக்ட் யூனோ ஒர்க்கிங் வித் ஹிம் ஐ ரியலி இன்ஃபேக்ட் செரிஷ் தோஸ் ஃபைவ் டேஸ் அபவுட் டூ டு டூ அண்ட் ஹாஃப் அவர்ஸ் வி ஸ்பெண்ட் எவ்ரி டே டாக்கிங் அபவுட் த ஸ்லைட்ஸ் அண்ட் தென் ஹவு டு லைஃப் இன் ஜென்ரல் ஸோ I really, in fact, okay, I, I should actually thank uh, Gopu, Swaminathan sir and also Tamil Dittage Test for having given me an opportunity to work with uh, such a wonderful, in fact, person as well as an artist. In fact. Thank you very much. And of course, uh, I have to also share a personal note. When my father wrote a book on uh, Chennai and it was translated to English called Chennai City uh, Kaladoscope, Uh, about half a dozen of his uh, sketches were used in that uh, book in fact my father used to really in fact uh, cherish his association in fact whenever you know both of them meet it as if in fact okay the outpouring of in fact uh, uh, an affection in fact the whole area will be you no know, soaked in uh, you know tamil solla pathinga vaanjaine ah okay enga appa oda peru vandu ashok mitran ஏன்னா அந்த டூ தௌசண்ட் ஃபிஃப்டீனில் அந்த புக்கு ரிலீஸ் ஆகும்போது இவர் வந்திருந்தார் ஐ மீன் தி கைண்ட் ஆஃப் யூனோ தி எக்ஸ்சேஞ்ச் அட் தே ஹாவ் ஹி கான் சி ஹிம் பட் தென் ஹி கேன் ஸ்டில் ஃபீல் தி அமௌண்ட் ஆஃப் அஃபெக்ஷன் அண்ட் யூனோ தி லவ் த ஈச் ஆஃப் தம் போத் ஆஃப் தம் இன் ஃபேட் ஓகே ஹேவ் டு ஈச் அதர் இன் ஃபேட் ஐ எம் வெரி ஃபார்ச்சுனேட் தட் ஐ ஒர்க் வித் ஹிம் இன் திஸ் லாஸ்ட் அபவுட் டூ டு த்ரீ வீக்ஸ் தேங்க் யூ வெரி மச் so next week we are next month we are meeting again on 7th september uh, the you know the topic is not decided but uh, we'll meet certainly thank you and then of course on 8th in fact we have uh, uh, professor saminathan's uh, 80th uh, birthday celebrations are there so i welcome all of you and then i request all of you to uh, attend both the programs and make it a big success and the program on 8th is in the Tamil Virtual Academy, 7th is in RK Center. Thank you.